By the end of this video, you will see a model that I've spent the last two years planning and gathering over 14,000 pieces for. No, not a part series, all one video. So sit back and relax as today we're going to be building one of the biggest Marvel projects on YouTube, fixing the Statue of Liberty final battle set by building our own in minifig scale. I know you guys have been super excited for this, so let's jump in. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Statue Project is, I should probably explain a little bit about what we're doing here. We're trying to recreate the final battle scene at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home that takes place at the Statue of Liberty. I teased this model right as the film came out about two years ago, and since then this model's been a little bit of development hell. The main reason being that the statue is just so damn big. Not only that, we have to build the statue itself and all of the little things around it, like the scaffolding, fight scenes, and other details. But the reason I've built this smaller statue is to convey the idea that unlike this set, I don't want to replicate the statue in the same way. I have this weird particular rule when it comes to humanoid characters that have been scaled up in Lego. When it's based on a minifigure, I think it should retain the minifigure's proportions instead of growing humanoid ones. So when building the Statue of Liberty, I actually want it to look more like this, just in scale with one of these. Now as you can imagine, since this video has taken so long to come out, I've been planning this build for a little while. I've made multiple drawings and renders of how I want this thing to look, and I've finally settled on a final design. Trust me when I say this thing is not going to be small. There are so many sections to this model that I think it's probably best if I can see all the pieces and can easily grab what I need when I need it. Thankfully, before I moved, I sorted all of the pieces out into individual boxes, and laying them out on this table, you can see how much work we have ahead of us. So that's what 14,000 pieces look like. And where better to start than the statue herself? Looking back at the film, you can see that the Statue of Liberty is in the process of being restored. Instead of being the iconic green colour we're all used to, she has returned to the original copper colour. I've seen people get into ridiculous fights about what colour the statue is in this film. Lego used this orangey nougat colour for the official set, which I don't necessarily think is a bad colour, it's just a little bit more on the expensive side. Funko used a gold colour on their pop figure, but for me, looking at the selection I have, I think I'm going to go with reddish brown. I know this might be a little bit of a controversial take, but copper is an extremely difficult colour to represent in LEGO. Unless you plan on buying the extremely rare and limited copper or metallic copper pieces, a LEGO copper statue just isn't happening, especially when you consider the fact they didn't even make common pieces in this colour. So looking at my alternatives, I think reddish brown is going to be the closest fit, and if I'm honest, I really do think it's going to work. So let's get building. But while I'm working on the rest of the skirt, one character that was unfortunately left out of the official set was Sandman. Well, unless you include this thing. And although we've had multiple Sandman minifigures, he's never really a man until the end when Toby heals him of his sand powers. But as I'm thinking I want to put Toby in another location, and the fact that this is meant to be the final battle, to me I think he should look more like a big sand tornado than anything else. So I think we're going to do a buildable version to make him look a bit more like a threat. When building this, again, we're going to follow our main rule when it comes to making oversized minifigures. Sandman is still massive compared to a person, but thankfully he is much smaller than the Statue of Liberty. This means I'm going to do a completely different technique to build him, and LEGO already seemed to have us covered, considering the fact they've made these big Harry Potter buildable figures, and I want to use the same techniques to build a big Sandman looking creature. While building up the torso, I can keep things relatively similar to the Harry Potter buildable figures, just changing out all of the grey and black pieces to various tan elements. But when it came to the head, I ran into a little bit of an issue. The problem is, these Harry Potter figures all come with hair pieces, but unfortunately the Harry hair piece is just the wrong shape for the Sandman that we see in the film. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to use a hair piece at all. So I'm going to have to do something myself that adds the stud to the top of the head. And there we go, our first finished element, Sandman. And the build looks great, but you may be asking, why is there only half here? Well, as I want this guy to be up on some scaffolding, I need to save weight where I can. Plus, I'm going off of my drawing where I only build half the Sandman. But one thing I definitely think is missing is the fact that I think this guy needs a face print. Now, as I'm not a massive fan of the buildable faces that people do in this scale, and we can't do any sort of printed face like the Harry Potter figures, I had to come up with an alternative, and that's why a few months ago I spent a long time trying to learn Illustrator to make myself a custom sticker sheet for this build. Now, we're following the same rules that LEGO would use here, so we can't put one sticker across multiple pieces, so I made six individual stickers for these six pieces to give 
the Sandman the menacing face print he deserves. And while you're looking at awesome shots of Sandman, did you know this channel is only 15,000 subscribers away from 100K? If you're enjoying this video so far and you haven't pressed subscribe yet, then please do so. And for those of you who are just taking that little bit of extra time out of your day just to make an account or press subscribe under this video, I really do thank you. It means a hell of a lot. But putting Sandman off to the side, I realize we're going to need a base for our statue. Now there are several ways that LEGO have done bases on their models in the past, with the most popular being a black plinth around the model. But as I'm not sure where this model is going to end just yet, I think it only makes sense that our base should be part of the pedestal that she stands on in real life. Now I'm not talking the full pedestal as we will literally be here for days, but I do want people to recognize the shape of the pedestal, so I'm thinking we still need to build a fair bit of it, so I'm thinking up to about the observation tower. That gives us a considerable chunk of pedestal that hopefully people will recognize as the base. When starting the base, I knew I wanted it to be slightly thicker than the bottom of the statue's skirt piece. Also taking into account that I want this to be minifig scale, I need a minifigure to be capable of fitting through the doors and walkways of this model. So as you can imagine, this thing's gonna be pretty big. I've used four 16 by 16 plates with additional plates between them to make a 41 by 41 square. Just to give you a little bit of context, here it is in comparison to the statue itself so far, and here it is next to a minifigure. So let's build this up a little bit more. As you can see, I'm using bricks to mark out where I want the walls and the walkways. This is honestly a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be for a base, but honestly, it's looking really cool. The combination of slopes and masonry bricks really do a good job at making this look and feel like the statue's pedestal. I'm just starting to get a little worried that the statue itself is going to be so heavy that it's going to cave in this massive top plate. It's only made using those same 16x16 16 16 plates, so hopefully using a bunch of 2x16 six bricks from the Pabble in this configuration will improve the pedestal's strength considerably. But leaving that aside, taking a look back at the film, before the big statue scene, all three Peters have a lovely scene where they make the cures for the villains at the lab of Midtown High. Cure some ass. Cure that ass. Loads of people asked me when I teased this model if I was ever going to do something with the interior, and it was always the plan to do something. I first considered the Sandman fight between Toby and Peter, considering that happens inside the statue, but like I said earlier, I've already ruled that out. But what I actually want to do is have a dedicated spot for Ned and MJ to stand, and have them trying to close the portal that got them there in the first place. So it means we need a tiny section of the school. Now as this is going to be going inside the statue, it can't be a massive footprint, but I'm going to make it as big as we can get it. So treating this a little bit like how I would do a normal video, we're going to start with a base, making sure to leave some studs for the walls and details. I'll build up the walls using some more of that tan masonry and add some windows using this really cool jumper technique to set them back a little bit. I don't suppose you'll see this smaller detail, but it's cool to put in nonetheless. Now we have our basic room. Looking back at the film, there's a lot of things we need to add into the room to give it a bit more detail. Firstly, there's a big glass box on the desk, which I'm going to add in using window pieces and brackets, and these smaller details like these desks and some gas tabs. I think this will be perfect for the inside of the statue. I especially love the plants going up the side of the wall and the lights hanging from the ceiling. But now we finish this part of the build, I need to add it to the statue itself. Working our way up the statue, we come to what I think is the most complicated part, the torso. Now the reason I say this is not only do I have to encase the school, but I'm really worried about the arms. Not only are they just a complicated build, but I suspect they're going to be really heavy. No matter how much planning you do, you can't really test the weight of an outstretched arm until you build it. I'm really hoping the left arm will be okay on its own, but I don't think the right arm will be able to hold the torch without some sort of support. Now, as I don't want any internal metal on this model, I need to come up with a workaround within the scaffolding itself to help support this arm. And even though I'm fairly confident about its strength, I'm worried that with the additional weight of the torch, it could start pulling itself apart. So I think we should start taking a look at some scaffolding designs and try and work in some support under the arm. When it came to designing the scaffolding itself, it was fairly difficult to get something that was strong but good looking. I first designed these, which I was happy with at first, however re-watching the film I realised the scaffolding isn't made of wood, it's made of metal. So although these medium nougat pieces would have been really good in giving this model some colour, I had to cancel them and buy them again in a light bluish grey. But even then, after getting these in hand, I realised they're really not strong enough. It was clear to me that this design was just not going to work, it was built to be cheap so I could have a lot of it, but unfortunately I think I'm just going to have to opt for less scaffolding, but 
more strength. When the official set released, I took a look at what they were doing to make their scaffolding so strong, and honestly, took a note out of a LEGO designer's book on this one. Using these pieces wedged between plates and tile made this entire thing so much stronger. And although, yes, they are more expensive now, I believe these are going to do a much better job holding up the Sandman, all the little details we want to put on this model, and as there's a little bit more going on with them, I'm going to use them to cover up these 1x4 bricks that are helping support the arms. Now all i got to do is build a hell of a lot more of them. Now let me tell you, when I built the first 10 of these, it was fine. But when I got to 11, my hands really started to hurt putting all of these small pieces together. But the more and more I made, the more and more this started to look like the picture we had designed from day one. Now this isn't all the scaffolding, I've still got one more full section to build, but I will move on for now to hopefully something a little bit more interesting, as I can safely say that scaffolding is definitely the most boring part of this build so far. So I'm going to move on to hopefully something that you guys might find a bit more interesting. And that's again working our way back up to the statue. I know I've kind of started by building the support underneath the arms, but the main pieces I'm trying to represent are these two from the torch piece on the minifig. It's funny to think how big these two pieces are going to be on this model. This is why I needed the support under the arm, because just in this torch piece alone, it's like 200 bricks. And as you can imagine, making super crazy projects and videos that you guys want to see is extremely important to me. Even this video alone has taken two and a half months to make. But when you spend that long on a project or a video doesn't do so well, it can be really rough on the YouTube AdSense. Making videos with super high effort and production value takes time and money. And as now we have two channels, I have caved and I have decided to make a Patreon. By supporting both channels over on Patreon, you're allowing us to rely on the YouTube ad revenue a little bit less. Allowing us to take a bit more time on projects, but overall giving you the quality that you want to see. Instead of both channels having memberships, it's easier for it all to just go in one place. And that's why over on Patreon you can get both channels content early, with no ads or sponsorship segments. You'll see little behind the scenes clips and extra videos, and even extended editions of regular YouTube content. There's even exclusive content up there right now about this project. So if you want more Statue of Liberty content, there's always that to check out. Consider pledging a little once a month, the link is in the top of the description. I know it's not a lot, but it really does make a massive difference behind the scenes. Thanks for letting me waffle on about this, it's a big decision for the channel, and I really hope it goes towards making some better videos. But wow, just look at this! This is the flame. That's right, this tiny piece has been blown up to this. But a question that might be at the back of your mind is why the hell are we even making a torch in the first place? Shouldn't it be a shield? I know most of you all know this, but I get this question a lot. Some people seem to think because the Captain America shield is being attached to the Statue of Liberty's forearm, it's replacing the torch. When in reality, it's just being attached to the forearm, which means the torch is completely intact. You can see the torch very clearly in most of the shots, and when Goblin blows up the box and sends the shield falling to the ground, the only difference between this one in the film and the real one is that it has been restored back to its original colour. And that begs the question, am I going to build the shield at all? This outstretched arm is going to have more weight than I'd like on it considering the torch, and I think building a gigantic minifig Captain America shield to go on to this would just send it tumbling down. And I don't think it's wise to build it on the floor either, because that's just going to take up a load of space that, let's be honest, we don't really have. And the only reason I'd want to build it anyway is so I could recreate the scene with Tom and Goblin, but I know I want those characters somewhere else on the model anyway, so it just seems a bit pointless to me. But I'll tell you one thing that isn't pointless, we definitely need some more colour on this model. Thankfully there are two massive cranes that the Spider-Men use to swing around the statue. The only tiny issue is, is that I've never built a crane before. I was never one for building construction sites as a kid, nor was I really ever into Technic or City, so I think I'm going to take a look at some official LEGO sets to see if we can't make anything similar. Taking a look at a bunch of LEGO sets, LEGO haven't really made many system built cranes, but they did make one recently that I actually really like in the new modular construction site set. It's a really nice design and I think if we build something like this but bigger, it could really work for this model. So I've started building the cranes and I can already tell it's going to be more difficult than I thought. I've got the original LEGO instructions open just here and I'm trying my best to make my version of this crane just bigger and stronger. But even though there's minimal technique, I'm still having issues with it. I'm just not used to these types of connections and it makes me realise how badly I need to get into technique. Hey, maybe that's a video we could do. Drop a like if you want to see that. With the build coming together using the Bricklink model as inspiration, I've added a similar cab for the operator, and some bricks to the back which I hope will keep this thing from falling over. The arm of the crane is a quarter larger than the Bricklink model, meaning I can't use the same technique they use for the strengthening cables, so I've made this alternate design which I'm really hoping works over time. And do you want to know the best part about this crane? I kinda need two of them. 
but by the power of movie magic, you don't have to see me build the other one, but these cranes won't be much use if they're this tall, so let's give them some height. I'm going to do that using these pieces. They are literally perfect and made for building cranes, and not only have a stud connection, but have an axle connection, so should make it super strong. Adding these to the model really does add that little splash of colour that I wanted. Not only that, it gives us multiple display options when displaying our characters. I can already imagine all of the specific spots that I want to put all of these characters in, and it's great to see this model coming together. But one minifigure I don't have a spot for just yet is J. Jonah Jameson. Now you might be asking, there isn't a J. Jonah Jameson minifigure from No Way Home? Well, I custom made one specifically for this set using a bunch of purist pieces. But unfortunately, he's just got nowhere to go on this model. But another thing I wanted to do with this model is add some minifigures that weren't necessarily in the scene. I even built an Aunt May minifigure intending to put her into the scene, but well... Yeah, that happens, so we can't really include her on this model. But we can include J. Jonah Jameson flying around the model in one of the Daily Bugle helicopters. Now, I swear, in an effort to make this statue project the most detailed project I've ever done, this helicopter turned out to be more detailed than any of the models I've made on the Iconic series. I think everybody's built a helicopter out of LEGO at some point in their life, but I wanted this helicopter to look exactly like the one we see on screen. So in doing a bit of research on No Way Home, I found a bunch of artwork and props used, including this image of the Daily bugle.net helicopter. Now I don't actually know how this quote unquote prop was used, but all I know is that this side angle is fantastic reference for this build. I'm really happy with the front section of the helicopter, I think the shaping is looking really good, and it's surprisingly strong despite the level of detail. The only thing I'm starting to worry about is the fact that I don't actually know if I've got enough room in here for minifigures. But adding the final details to the helicopter, I'm actually really happy with the way that it looks. The windows look great, the opening door is a great touch, and the blades actually spin. But one of the final touches that I think this needs is remember that Sandman sticker sheet? Well, along with that Sandman face, I made all of these stickers for the side of the Daily Bugle helicopter. These are a real pain as it's a massive section of the build. And like I say, I can't have one sticker on more than one element. might be asking, how the hell are we going to suspend this helicopter in the air? Lego itself can't fly, so what are we going to do? Well, a few months ago, Ellie Goo sent me their Mars 3 Pro, which I used to make a really cool skeleton. And now they've sent me their Neptune 3 Pro to mess around with, and I think it's perfect for what we want to do here. So jumping into some 3D software, I need to make a base that will eventually have this acrylic tube in it. I know I said I didn't want anything other than Lego supporting the model, and to be honest, I could use those massive clear panel pieces underneath the helicopter, but if you ask me, not only are they distracting, but they're frankly quite ugly. And the last thing I'd want is something really ugly next to the Statue of Liberty. So after firing up the printer and getting this thing on to print, I now had to wait the three or so hours it was to print this item off in super high quality. Now we're almost done here, but way back when when I started this project, there were a few things that I wanted to do with this model, even before I made that first sketch. One of those things that I really want to start doing with my models is adding a bit more life to them. Now this can be done in many ways. There's minifig posing, there's movement, or in this case, I want to do LEDs. The only issue with that is, as this is such a big model, we're going to need a lot of LEDs. I've made a little plan and I've sent it over to my friends over at Light My Bricks. If you ask me, they're one of the best lighting companies when it comes to LEGO. And they're the only company I know that makes some really specific things that will make this model look really cool. Hey guys, I'm Jordan from Light My Bricks, and Tommy sent over his plans for this Statue of Liberty mock. It's awesome, but I think we can help him spice it up with some lights. Let's get it. Firstly, we'll include the light ring from the Sanctum Sectorum set. We'll throw in some micro bit lights like in the Emperor's hands. Also including some light rings like we've used in the Vespa here. And all the expansion boards slash connecting cables you could need. Hopefully these will bring your build to life and we can't wait to see what you do. Good luck. And while we're getting on with that, we have to talk about something. As nice as like my bricks are for sending some stuff out for this project, we're going to need a lot more stuff that I actually already have. 
The only issue is, it's in here. Now don't hate me yet, I love this model just as much as you guys do. It's a staple of the channel. But honestly, this model's seen better days. Sometimes it's necessary to repurpose models when you need parts, and I know we need parts from this model. Not only that, if you remember those videos, I filled this thing full of LEDs. I love this model, I've had this proudly displayed in my house. It actually makes me really happy to know that I'm taking the pieces from this model and putting them into other projects, not just this one, that in my opinion are arguably way more creative than the Daily Bugle. I know it's sad, but there are so many useful pieces in here that we're gonna put to good use on other models. Plus look at all of the LEDs we're pulling out of this thing. Testing everything to make sure it all works and organizing all of the pieces as I go. Not to mention we just received our package from Light My Bricks. I think we now have all of the LEDs we need to get this entire model lit up. Now as there are so many LEDs on this model to go through, and considering this video is already over 18 minutes, for the people who do want to see every single detail, I'm going to upload a super long breakdown slash review slash comparison of the old one, and I'll make sure I go through every single detail. If you want to see that, make sure to head over to Tommy C Figs or Tommy C Media Group over on Patreon to see that. But as we build up the rest of the model and add LEDs along the way, I think it's only right that we build up the rest of the statue, including the top of the torso, finishing off things like the scaffolding, and finally getting getting all of the LEDs and the cranes. But as you can probably notice, there's one thing missing on the statue, that being the head. And here's where I get a little bit real with you guys. At the beginning of this project two years ago, I wanted to recreate this concept image of all three Spider-Men stood on the tips of the crown at the Statue of Liberty's head. And now with only the head to go, it was becoming a bit surreal. Maybe my instructions weren't very good, maybe my hands were tired, or maybe I'd just been building this statue for way too long at this point, but the head was definitely the hardest thing to make out of everything. The layers were starting to blur together at this point, but with one final push and tired hands, we finally finished the Statue of Liberty. The one thing I've failed to mention throughout this entire video is minifigures. Yeah, I mentioned J. Jonah Jameson, but I haven't said anything about the main figures of the set. Now, as this project has taken so unbelievably long, and the recent expansion pack to the Statue of Liberty Final Battle, we now have an official LEGO minifigure for every character in the scene. So we'd be silly not to use them, right? Well, throughout the literal years of collecting pieces, I've really got into custom minifigures. And in this box, I deem to have, in my opinion, the best custom minifigures from several different custom companies, all of which I'll be going through and comparing to the official versions of these figures on a separate video on my other channel Tommy C Figs. This video is already way too long and it just makes sense to put that video there. So you can check out that video after this one. So without further ado, I think we unlock this case and get these minifigures posed on the model. And before I add the last minifigure, I just want to say thanks so much for watching this video. This project has been two years in the making going on and off between projects. There's a lot more that I actually wanted to do with this model, but all of that I'll do in the breakdown. For now, I'm just super happy to call it finished. And yes, before you ask in the comment section, I will be taking it to as many UK conventions as I can get it to. So keep an eye out for me and the statue and don't be afraid to come and say hi. But speaking of that breakdown video, if you do want to see it, plus a few more videos, you can check out Tommy C Figs. And if you want to see all the details, ins and outs, decisions I made and more, I'm doing a little behind the scenes video as well as an extended edition of that breakdown video over on my Patreon. So make sure you go and check out that link in the description. I'm just going to remind you again, if you could subscribe, if you like this video, we're so close to that 100k mark and it would mean the world to me if we could hit it. So without further ado, let's add our final minifigure, someone who I really wish could see this model, a minifig of Stanley.